Hello my friends on YouTube. Today is Sunday, the 14th of August 2022. Today's video is about si silencing Salman Rujdi as of today and silencing Ka'ab ibn al-Ashraf in the past. Before I start, as I was reading the news this morning, in the main letter on BBC Arabic, a Christian church in Egypt was burned and few people died and this is very unfortunate but the first thing came to my head and I'm just asking this question to see why the first thing came to my head there must have been they call them Muslim terrorists or Islamic terrorists or whatever terrorists whatever came to my head why that particular name came to my head and not like, let's say Buddhist terrorist or Hindu terrorist or Jewish terrorist the reason is very obvious terrorism is found in this kind of ideology and therefore it is practiced and we saw it with Salman Rushdie to start with Salman Rushdie is a writer he is not a man uh, who is going uh, with weapon or he has his own weapon is his pen but he is not uh, going around shooting Muslim people or harming them physically. But yes, he is causing damage to the ideology of Islam. He is very dangerous. Not only him, each and every human being, man or woman, who criticizes what seems to be very wrong and that's dangerous because you cannot um, negotiate with the people who believe that this is good or from God how would you negotiate that it's you have a good peaceful family if you have four wives at home and they will I mean girls at home if you have more than one daughter they argue and they fight sometimes that's what women will do and imagine also if a woman is marrying four husbands they will fight among themselves that will not be a harmonious home that will not be a very good environment to raise up healthy mentally healthy children and nobody Muslim or from any other faith will say that this is a healthy environment for one man to have many women and they are all living together probably also the children will hate each other I mean it's also in the Bible but the Bible doesn't uh, allow I mean if you want to do that uh, in the past if you are wealthy it was open but I doubt very very much if you go to Israel today and I'm sure there are many wealthy people in Israel and tell me that you have a Israeli man married to three four wives 
I doubt very, I doubt that very much because he is wealthy, he is well educated, and he will not do that nonsense. So when somebody like Salman Rushdie open that stuff and and criticize it, there will be no answer, and because there is no answer, it will make me look like a failure like what I have is worthless I cannot defend it so it's either I leave it and, and, and admit that it's nonsense or I try to do something and because I cannot convince you that this is really good and here are the result that what I'm saying is good it's good positive result I have to do something else, which is getting rid of you, getting rid of Salman Rushdie, getting rid of anyone who criticizes the false ideology. He is too dangerous because it's false and easy to prove that it's false, and therefore it's better to get rid of him because we will not be able to stop his pen. His pen is so dangerous more dangerous than a cannon bomb. If we go back 1400 years ago, there was a writer, a very well educated man, and he was Jewish. His name was Kaab ibn al Ashraf. And this man, he lived in Arabia, in a castle. That means if you live, if you own a castle anywhere, it means you have certain income that allows to live this kind of life. And to live in a castle as a, an intellectual of back then, you must have servants. You cannot take care of the castle yourself or your wife. That's a castle. And that man was a writer, a poet, a well educated man. So when Islam came about, <coughs> this man living in Arabia as a Jew. So I would say he was very much aware of his own Jewish faith and tradition as an intellectual. And he must have been also aware of the Christian faith and tradition because there were, were big there was a big segment uh, of Christian people living in Arabia at this time, as well as other faith, pagan faith, and everybody free to do whatever they want okay you want to believe that Kaaba because many people back then believed that Kaaba is the holiest uh, of the, the the statues or the idols that were in Mecca yeah they knew that it was idol an idol but uh, it was the biggest and the most uh, influential idol there were 360 other idols but that was the most popular so this man is aware of all what's surrounding him the different cultures the different religions the different faith and Mecca was like New York City people coming from all over the world to do business so they come with their faith and tradition and ways of worship and what have you so they were exposed to each other they know what uh, because even people from India used to trade there so they were aware of the Indian faith of Hinduism they were aware of uh, the Greek mythology they were aware of Christianity they were aware of uh, Ju Judaism especially that, that's the job of intellectual people, the writers, to read and to know. So he was not illiterate, he was a learned man. 
And that learned man, Ka'ab ibn al-Ashraf, started to write, to expose Islam, to write and criticize intellectually the, the faults of this teaching. Whether he was right or wrong is not the issue here. The issue is you are putting thoughts in front of me I have the right to criticize this, this thought and this teaching to find out whether it's true or false. How would you know if somebody say I discovered a new theory, scientific theory? Would scientists just accept it or they will put it to the test? And then if it's working, then it's a, yeah, it's a good theory, we can use it. But it's a good theory without questioning or examining it. And whoever tries to examine it, you kill him or her. So most people actually, that they, they were killed 1400 years ago whether it's Ka'b ibn al-Ashraf, Asma bint Marwan, uh, Umm Qarfa, all these people were writers. They are very dangerous. Always intellectuals are very dangerous for dictators. Even in the modern history, Mao in China, he murdered 60 million Chinese. Most of them were teachers, educators, and writers. Because these are the people who listen, examine, and criticize, and see if it's good or bad, and their word will have weight. These are too dangerous because if they say what, I, what I'm teaching is wrong, I will go to hell soon. I will be killed. People will rise against me. It's better to get rid of those who know of the intellectual. And he did. The guy from North Korea, Kim Jong-un, he killed his half-brother. He was gaining popularity. He can push him aside. He can take over. No, you cannot allow that to happen. I will lose control. So 1400 years ago, to show you the group that went to assassinate Kab ibn Ashraf, the writer, and the dignity of this writer, the way they act and relate to one another, so the founder of Islam can see that this man is writing dangerous stuff. Can destroy me quickly. And I cannot convince him otherwise. What I have is not enough to teach this man anything good. He knows more. So, one day he asked, that was a common way to ask, who is for this writer, Ka'b ibn al-Ashraf? That means, who is going to kill this guy? Who is for this man means, who will take responsibility to slaughter him? So, a man, his name was Muhammad bin Maslama. Muhammad bin Maslama. That man was a friend of the writer, Ka'b ibn al-Ashraf. And when he joined that group, his heart changed. The Arabs actually had certain tradition, yet that you do not betray your friend. You don't. You don't do that. But once he followed that new stuff that it came, they call it religion or what have you. He is willing 
to slaughter his friend. Furthermore, another man in the Arabic tradition, because that was not Jewish or Islamic or, or Christian tradition, it was Arabic religion, uh, it was Arabic tradition. If two babies, if a mother, one single mother, nurses give her milk to two babies, let's say her own and her neighbor's baby, his mother probably is sick or something, so, okay, while you are sick, give me your baby, I will nurse him, I'll give him of my milk, so he can survive. Should this mother do that? I believe for five times nurse the baby of her neighbor or her friend or what have you the two children becomes brother or brother and sister and if the, it's a boy and a girl they cannot marry each other in the future because they become brother and sister that was the Arab the tradition of the Arabs there is a blood bond now you can't that he is my brother or she is my sister. We, our mother nursed us together, so we are brother and sister. Of the group that went to assassinate the writer, Ka'b ibn al-Ashraf, was his long life friend who changed after became, followed the new tradition or whatever, to religion or whatever, whatever you want to call it, and his brother in nursing his brother his brother and three more they went to ask him to lend them money so let's see these are the people that they are going to assassinate. That's their, their practice. That's their standard. Okay? And let, let me read what the writer said at this moment. Okay. They went to his castle and they called him because the castle is closed at night time you cannot get in okay they called him so he came out his wife said listen to this I hear voice as it is blood blood in their voice the, the friend and the brother calling him to come down and the wife of Kaab ibn al-Ashraf told him, I hear blood in their voice. Listen to what he said to his own wife, to his wife. This is my friend and my brother. What are you talking about? That's my friend I'm, and my brother. It's like, if I don't trust my friend and my brother, who else to trust? So he said, it's my friend Muhammad bin Maslama and Abu Na'ila. And he continues, the honorable man, if he is called at night to be stabbed, he should heed the call. And what he means by that is like I don't know they are calling me maybe they are in trouble maybe somebody down there threatening their lives my friend and my brother yes if I go down I may be stabbed but they are calling me they may they, they may be in trouble and they need my help that was his response that was his standard that was their standard and that was his standard okay the, he went down to see them they slaughtered him ok 
today if we check I don't want to say the name of the boy who tried to kill to kill Salman Rushdie but we have the saying that it says birds of a feather flock together this boy must have been exposed to a similar teaching murder especially those who stand against you any dictator does not want he wants to he or she wants to silence the opposition that's why in America the first amendment is freedom of speech so in case if we have a problem we solve it talking if you try to silence me it means you are automatically trying to be a dictator if one party or one group of people try to silence the other group that is a sign for dictatorship to come and that was 1400 years ago you criticize the violent group you die we should not be afraid to stand up even if we die even if we get stabbed we should stand because it's better to die honorable death like Kaab ibn al-Ashraf like Salman Rushdie who put his life on the line than to cower to be a coward thank you thank you very much we hope to hear from you